What's going on everybody? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a slab to flatten, a new bit to try out, as well as some new style rails for the router sled. Stick around and I'll show you what I have in mind. First of all, if you guys haven't seen the video I made on how to make a router sled, I will link that in the video description below. I was just using 2x4s for rails before and I just screwed them down to my workbench, but since I built this nice new bench, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to create some new rails that I could clamp down, so I took some 3 quarter inch ply that was left over from another project and I just cut it to the length of my assembly table, which was 6 feet. Then I set up my stock guides for 3 quarter inch material and I cut 4 3 and a half inch strips out of the 6 foot long sheet as well as 2 2 inch strips. Once I had all my pieces cut, I laid them out to kind of get an idea of what the rails would look like. I laminated together two of the three and a half inch strips using some glue and screws. I used Tight Bond Quick and Thick on this. I like using it for shop projects because it dries pretty fast and it's super strong. I used clamps to make sure everything was lined up as I drove in the screws. As for the 2 inch strips, I drilled in some pocket holes and then attached them to the rails for a clamping surface. I made sure the screw heads on the main rails were facing the inside when I attached these pieces so the sled won't hit them. If you're smarter than me, you'll use countersunk screws so it won't matter. I really utilized my clamps here to make sure everything was flush and clamped down tight when I was driving in the pocket screws. I was also having problems with the sled staying straight on the rails, so I attached some one inch strips of three quarter inch ply to keep the sled on track. I just used glue and brad nails for this. The last step was to add some paste wax. I always use this stuff on my jigs and sleds and even the surfaces of my saws and joiner because it makes everything slide nice and smooth. Now you can kind of get a better visual of how it will clamp to the bench. It worked out great. This slab was actually really cupped on one end and you can see it's got a pretty bad crack in it as well. So I decided to cut it down to salvage as much of the thickness as possible. If I had flattened the whole thing, it would probably end up being about an inch thick and that's just a waste. Once it was cut, I could lay it up on the bench and use shims to get it fairly level. This piece was heavy enough that it didn't move, but if you had a lighter slab, you may need to secure it to the table. Hot glue works pretty well for that. I've teamed up with Bits and Bits Company this year and they sent me this two inch surfacing bit. This thing is a beast and I wanted to test it out on this old Claro slab. It has their Astra coating on it, so it'll last two to three times longer. If you guys are interested in this bit or anything else offered by the Bits and Bits Company, I will leave links below and also you can use the code WALKER15 to get 15% off anything on the website. I will also leave links to all the other tools I use in this video in the description below as always for you guys. Okay, back to the slab. When you first start, you'll just be taking off the high spots. Don't try to take off too much at once, I usually just shoot for about an eighth inch max. It's time consuming, but it's worth it in the end. Also, when taking passes, I try not to overlap the last path by more than half. 
If you start to hear a router bog down too much or you start getting burn marks or anything like that, just raise it up a little bit and take off a little less. Once you've taken your first few passes, you can start to see it really come to life. The lines in the slab are normal and are easily sanded out. You could also use this to flatten any large cookies or end grain cutting boards or any cutting board for that matter, or even just standard boards that have a large cup in them and are too big to go through your planer. It's definitely a mess and you'll have to clean up quite a bit, but just look at those colors. Clara Walnut's definitely one of my favorite woods to work with. Well, I got that side flattened. I still have to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side, but I won't need any shims or anything. You may have to put something underneath to raise it up if your router can't reach. But other than that, the rails worked amazing. The bit worked awesome. I'll leave links to that in the description below for you guys, like I said. And uh, if you guys do decide to do this, make sure you wear eye protection and a mask because it is a mess. I'm going to get to doing this and clean this place up, and I'll see you guys on the next one.